Yo, what one Rowan Sandro Che here, and of course, it's that time to talk about the latest chapter of Boruto, Boruto Manga Chapter 63, which I had the pleasure of live reacting to earlier today. Of course, that video is up on the channel if you guys are interested in, you know, checking out my live thoughts <laughs> on the chapter. But yo, this chapter, chapter 63, ask no questions. Before we even get into it, of course, guys, drop a like for your friendly neighborhood, Uchiha, of course. <laughs> Definitely helps the channel out. But yo, getting into it, my thoughts on this chapter coming out of it. To be honest, it was actually a pretty decent chapter. I would have actually given it a 7.5 out of 10. Probably best case scenario, probably like 8 out of 10. But this chapter... It continues and finally dives into the action I feel like a lot of us actually wanted after the more slower character driven you know piercing that the last few chapters had and of course we dive headfirst in the fight between Code versus Boruto and Kawaki with this chapter mainly featuring Boruto himself going in against, against Code. so let's get into it so this chapter <laughs> <laughs> we have a few things to talk about. Of course, the chapter starts off with, you know, the conversation that we have between Boruto and Kowaki. As you would expect with Boruto, you know, asking Kowaki if he, this is his plan to, you know, use himself as bait to actually draw code out. And of course, you know, Kowaki admits this is the way he plans to actually protect the seven Hokage Naruto Uzumaki are friendly neighborhood knuckleheaded Hokage essentially and to be honest the dialogue that we got from most of this chapter when it comes down to Kod and Kawaki is you know given the history of their characters is what's to be expected when it comes on to the dialogue that we got in this chapter <coughs> of course we have Kawaki trying to kind of push Boruto to the side so he can actually take charge Kowaki in this chapter as we see it actually wants to implement his plan use himself as a sacrifice to protect Naruto at all costs no matter what Naruto thinks of you know how he's actually going about it so you know that's to be expected even though personally I was expecting Kowaki had some other grand master plan to protect um, Naruto but it is what it is I've kind of warmed up to the idea that this is his last only other plan so that it's only his only plan rather <laughs> than his only other plan so there's that but what i definitely liked about the early dialogue parts of the chapter is based on the history that kawaki and code have and the new pieces of information that code has given kawaki from last chapter until now it's fun to see kawaki make the deduction that the person that code wants to actually bring him to hold on yeah, feeling a bit stuffy there. <laughs> but yeah, the person that Code wants to actually bring him to is someone that he more so might have better luck reasoning with and, or negotiating with. Because given his history, Code, as he said in this chapter, Code would more likely want to kill him <laughs> off the bat. And the fact that he hasn't done that and the new pieces of information that Code has actually given him, Kowaki deduces that, yo, you know, let me just willingly go because I could probably work something out with the person who who has this Ishiki Otsutsuki obsessed person seemingly on a leash for lack of a better term. So it was fun. It, it, it just comes down to the fact that the history of these characters informed the deduction that Kawaki made in this chapter. And I actually liked that and it made sense. Um, Ida for me actually made the chapter all that much better, so much better because I think Kishimoto is doing a lovely job with her in terms of portraying her personality, just from the her seeking love, her expressions, her reaction to Kawaki's dialogue, and the fact that it's such a serious moment. It like her reactions like contrasted with what's going on between Boruto Kawaki <laughs> and Kod. I just found it like very funny. So I think it's just these little things that are actually building up Ida to be like a fan favorite for me personally. And I thought it just made the chapter so much more enjoyable. It was just. <laughs> I just found it funny. I'm not gonna lie, her reactions, um, seeing her blush and everything, um, I just found it a treat to actually read and go through. And of course, props to Ikimoto because, I don't know, the arts, 
the art was actually I found the art to be good for me personally and you know again just even comparing the art for this chapter to even like the first 10 chapters of Boruto I think Ikimoto has improved drastically so um even the way like he drew Aida and how she was portrayed with the blushing and everything it just it, it was just like oh Kawaki wants to talk to me <laughs> It was, it was it was just so funny honestly so i definitely definitely like that tidbit of course we have boruto going in fighting code and the choreograph of the fight so far is actually pretty decent um what i especially loved about the fight um is them kind of drawing back the themes drawing back to the themes of boruto but more so are specifically stressing the whole ninja versus non-ninja dynamic because code you know you know says yo fighting boruto is fun like well fighting a ninja is fun and of course we know code isn't a shinobi so it just comes back to the whole you know this is a new era it's a new way of doing things traditional means of gaining power versus non-traditional and we kind of have this represented in the fight between boruto and code and i like it because even when we had that you know that regular shuriken shadow claw and boruto then you know transitioning into the the lightning style jutsu i like that because i wasn't expecting that i was saying on the live reaction that i'm used to the whole somebody transformed into a like a, a shuriken being like a demon wind, windmill shuriken i'm not used to it being like a regular size shuriken so i was not expecting that in the chapter so for the most part the choreography of the fight so far uh, with Borto activated against level one karma versus code is pretty good but of course we have code you know transitioning between his markings you know flying thunder god pseudo pseudo knockoff so of course Borto isn't really getting much headway you know, actually taking code down so <laughs> there's that but i love the whole you know non-ninja versus ninja um dynamic they're actually stressing and i'm hoping they continue to stress that because i think when it comes down to stressing the whole ninja versus non-ninja thing it kind of makes for a more interestingly choreographed fight because the person that's with the shinobi background is going to try to you know you know take the person down that's non-shinobi by you know using shinobi means take catching them off guard surprise and that shock and wonder when it comes on to the perspective of the non, the non shinobi is going to i guess make a more of a wow factor um so that's the way i'm looking at it no we find out an additional piece of lore when it comes on to the karma seal we have kishimoto dropping the fact that you know boruto yeah, he, he gets a power from using karma, but we have Code revealing the true essence of karma as he says. Getting stronger via the karma like from increased like physical stats is one thing, but apparently you get all the years of battle experience um, layered on top of your body and mind as Code puts it in this chapter, which is very interesting because, you know, I think for the longest while most of us were, would say that yeah, we, we safely deduce that okay yeah person uses the karma they're probably they're more like tapping into the power of the otsutsuki the karma belongs to but the fact that they if you use the karma properly that's the you know the disclaimer god why am i so stuffy <laughs> um yeah you gain the battle experience which i find is interesting and it kind of adds to the whole list of things that are adding to you know how boruto are uh, well yeah, how Boruto is going to surpass Naruto and Sasuke because if he's continually, if he starts using it right, which it seems like it's going to be the case by the end of this chapter, you know, continually tapping into that battle experience. Boruto is a prodigy, so he'll continually be improving in terms of his base skills. I would imagine he'll start memorizing how you know these strategies and everything. So that's the way I'm looking at it. So it kind of just seems like it's building up towards that list of reasons how. Of how you know Boruto is going to actually surpass you know Naruto and Sasuke especially since with their recent nerfs so there is definitely that and of course by the end of the chapter we have Boruto who seems like he's tapping into more of the Carmen's abilities but it does not seem like Momoshiki has taken over his body because he still has both eyes open even though one of his eyes now is the you know the Otsutsuki or the Byakugan eye essentially it's not activated but you know it's that pale eye and he seems like he's powering up so 
there is definitely that. Now, coming from last chapter, I had a problem with how Kishi was handling Boruto leaving the village and Naruto not realizing or how that was handled. I went and kind of browsed back through chapter 62 and looking back at it, it seems like Boruto left the house without Naruto realizing, which is still kind of eh, iffy to me. So I still kind of have a problem with it going even into this chapter. So there's that. And of course, uh, I'm starting to wonder if Borja is subconsciously sub, um, suppressing his chakra, similar to Kawaki, but the fact that he's in the fight now, once they expand the search here like what Naruto wants him to do in this chapter, I imagine we'll get um, either somebody showing up by the end of next chapter or three quarters of the way through next chapter. Hopefully Sasuke, because he needs a moment. <laughs> he really does. So. All in all, I thought it was a pretty decent chapter with the choreography and the fight between, you know, Boruto and Kuo being good. I love that they stress the whole theme of tradition versus non-tradition, shinobi versus non-shinobi. Um, of course, Aida, her personality, and Kishimoto just kind of fleshing out her personality and just her, just her expressions and how she acted in this chapter made it all the more better for me. Kawaki, you know, the history of him informing his decisions and his deductions in this chapter. Um, and of course the additional pieces of lore that kind of speaks volumes in terms of how the future of this series is going to go from uh, from the perspective of Boruto surpassing the previous generation. But uh, all the same, I'm still kind of iffy on who will, you know, Boruto leaving the village and not realizing. So all in all, I thought it was a decent chapter and the persons who wanted the story to kind of start picking up and go more towards more action or more plot driven piercing then i think they should be satisfied with this chapter all in all yeah i don't really have much complaints so yeah but anyway let me know what you guys thought about chapter 63 of the boruto manga and what are your what are you looking for forward to going into chapter 64 because it seems the fight is going to continue so yeah but anyway sanjo and i'll see you guys in the next boruto video mm -hmm.